Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, January 13th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, a U.S. soldier who's just returned from West Africa is found dead in a pool of vomit. Then, while the hack of CENTCOM's social media accounts looks phony from every aspect, nevertheless, Obama uses it and the Sony hack to push a new CISPA bill for internet control. And aren't these kids the cutest darn jihadis you've ever seen? All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. A Fort Hood soldier was found dead in his yard early this morning, and Fort Hood officials have confirmed that the man is a soldier. He recently returned from a deployment to West Africa. Now, officials say that there are no indications that the soldier had Ebola. However, medical personnel at Carl R. Darnell Medical Center are running tests as a precaution to make sure that there is no threat to the community. Now, this report mentions, whereas I'll find some other local news on KXAN, they don't really mention that the soldier was found in or near a pool of vomit. This is what actually prompted the concerns about Ebola. Now, about 3,000 troops were deployed to West Africa to help fight the outbreak. Troops returning from West Africa were ordered to undergo a 21-day monitoring period at a controlled monitoring site on post. Now, this soldier, however, was out on emergency leave. They said he had an apparent family emergency. It wasn't medical-related. And the soldier was under self-monitoring. He was supposed to check in twice a day. We've heard this before. They check in with their officials twice a day. Uh, but here, he was allowed out on emergency leave. Obviously, we're going to have to give you more details as they come in. In, but we didn't even know that the Ebola soldiers had returned. We would not have even known that they deployed and now that they're returned and they're in quarantine if this soldier hadn't died in his front yard. And now they're not even pointing that it's Ebola. It's not. I mean, who dies in their front yard in a puddle of vomit. How many soldiers are now back? How many soldiers are quarantined? These are the kinds of things that we would like to know. However, it's probably gonna be uh, you know, national security, top secret, and of course the mainstream media has been ordered to not report on Ebola at all. So we'll probably hear not a peep about this really. Um, we're not allowed to get all hyped up about Ebola. So we will continue to update the story as the details come in. But they don't want you to worry about that. What Obama wants you to worry about is cyber vandalism, fake cyber attacks, fake cyber false flags. That's what Obama is concerned about. That's what's gonna allow him to bring in this new reign of tyranny over the internet. And surprise, surprise, Obama is talking about the recent Sony hacks as well as the very convenient hacking of CENTCOM yesterday as a push for more cybersecurity. Obama said, with the Sony attack that took place and with that Twitter account that was hacked by Islamist jihadist sympathizers yesterday, it just goes to show how much more work we need to do, both public and private sector, to strengthen our cybersecurity. Now he uh, unveiled this proposal today this is gonna increase sharing of information on cyber threats from the private sector with protection from liability. The measure will also criminalize the sale of stolen financial data and will require companies to notify consumers about data breaches. So of course, that's those are good things, but let's focus on the fact that they're going to be now sharing information. Companies can easily share all of our information with government agencies very easily without a warrant, and they don't have to fear being sued by any civilians who might feel that they violated their constitutional rights. And it's getting so ridiculous now. They can just throw out any false flag out there, hack themselves, hack their own Twitter account, and then it's a new cyber vandalism, and then calling out for more, more laws, more government agencies to oversee this. Meanwhile, all these agencies are already put in place. We already have massive NSA surveillance, and it hasn't stopped a single, single terror attack, nor did it stop CENTCOM from being hacked. Now, once again, also, you know, the terrorists were under, they were monitored, the government agencies knew who they were, but yet terror attacks still were uh, taken out. So what does this language basically mean? 
more data collection. The proposal is gonna make it even easier for law enforcement and other agencies to collect your private information. And the new companies, of course, can share this data without worrying about violating your rights. Now, the Electronic Frontier Foundation revealed that this expanded information sharing poses a serious risk of transferring even more personal information to intelligence and law enforcement agencies. And they point out that this was something that the White House criticized CISPA legislation for in 2013. And the CISPA law was written so broadly that internet companies could share Americans' emails, text messages, and even files stored online with the feds. And of that, one of the key provisions of CISPA was that it was written notwithstanding any other law. This means that CISPA would have trumped privacy laws, all while granting companies the aforementioned immunity from any civil or criminal liability. So what Obama is proposing is the same exact thing, but just with a new name. It's like the high fructose corn syrup switch. You know, they just changed it to some other word that means sugar that's highly toxic for you. This is the same exact thing. And of course, we pointed out yesterday this alleged CENTCOM hacking was very convenient. It happened at the same time that Obama was giving this speech on cybersecurity. And we were the only ones so far that have reported that Anonymous says that they traced back this hacker's IP address to Maryland, which is of course home to NSA and other things. But there is no other outlet reporting about that just yet. But what they are reporting here, this is from the Daily Beast, that the alleged ISIS hackers probably aren't that at all. Now, Daily Beast says that privately, defense officials told them that they were skeptical that this hacking was conducted by ISIS, but they said it was too early to say who actually carried out these attacks. Of course, it's not too early for Obama to use it to push for cybersecurity laws, uh, but they said some of the signs that are leading them to believe that the jihadis are probably fake is that they followed a Twitter account, Andrew Jackson Jihad, which is a folk punk band from the American Southwest. And it also pointed out that uh, they, they use the acronym ISIS. So the, they said, I love you, ISIS. They put that up on the corner there uh, when they hacked Twitter and YouTube. And according to a terrorism analyst and former FBI special agent, ISIS, you know, while we might call it the Islamic State or ISIS here, ISIL by the United States, the group rarely uses that name. Members and supporters of the group rarely will call themselves ISIS. So this is something that is, you know, they're thinking that it was probably just a ruse, someone going in and making this up. But of course, everything that they posted on Twitter was public information anyway. So it's, I mean, they could have easily just cut and paste something from somewhere else and then just said that they hacked in because I doubt CENTCOM would be attaching all of these files, uh, including email addresses and home addresses of, of top officials, retired officials to their Twitter. So that doesn't even really make sense. But of course, why does CENTCOM and CIA and all these other agencies even need social media? Well, the better to propagate to you, my dear, and of course, the easier to pull off these false flag cyber hacks, so they can call it cyber vandalism, and of course, take away our freedoms. And this is exactly what economist Martin Armstrong warned. He said that these twin attacks in France are gonna be used by world leaders to push for restrictions on internet privacy and the total elimination of encrypted communications. And he points out that David Cameron is already saying that he wants to block WhatsApp and Snapchat if he wins the next election. This is part of his plans for new surveillance. And Britain is, of course, hand in hand with the NSA. And when the attacks took place in Paris, these NSA talking heads came out basically smiling and just so pompous saying, of course, the French are going to come to us immediately and ask for whatever information we have because we have all this sweeping surveillance and you see how it's a great thing and it's great that we're spying on you because it's for your safety. Now, don't ask us why we didn't actually stop any of these terror attacks, but you know, we need more surveillance. Now, former Democrat and Senator Joe Lieberman takes it a step further. He basically says, uh, taking it to the pages of Wall Street Journal, calling for a global war on Islam. Lieberman writes that 
The inspiring unity that filled the streets of Paris on Sunday in defense of freedom must be transformed into the mighty unity that is necessary now to defeat radical Islam before it kills more people and takes away more freedom. Now, let's just point out that it's not the Islamic radicals that want to take away our freedom. It's the tyrannical governments who are taking away our freedoms and their mainstream media minions who bow down to the demands of terrorists and refuse to post cartoons because they don't want to be offensive. Meanwhile, they'll post beheading videos and videos of a policeman being shot while he's begging for his life. So that's what's actually taking away our freedoms. But I digress. Lieberman says that nations must exploit the outrage produced by terrorist attacks to officially declare war. His selective war against Islam calls on the United States, France, and other nations to form and lead a global alliance against radical Islam, calling on Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Egypt, to name a few. Uh, he says because they have such a huge Muslim population there who don't share the extremist views of these terrorists. And uh, Kurt Nimmo here in this article points out how Saudi Arabia and the Gulf Emirates along with the U.S. military and the CIA, are directly responsible not only for the, the rise of the Islamic State, but also al-Qaeda and the Taliban. So he's basically calling on these people who are directly responsible for the rise of the Islamic State to fix the problem that they created, problem, reaction, solution. So that's something that you know we see again and again and again. But rather than starting another war, to fix the problem that you created. Here's a better response. Houden in wat ik noem de wij samenleving. Ja, en als je het hier niet ziet zitten, omdat je humoristen niet ziet zitten die een krantje maken. Ja, mag ik het zo zeggen? Rot de hop. So that was the mayor of Rotterdam speaking on live television just hours after the shootings in Paris, basically saying that it's incomprehensible that anyone could turn against freedom, but if you don't like freedom, for heaven's sake, pack your bags and leave. Now, we we'll want to point out that the mayor, uh, Mayor Abu Talib, grew up the son of an imam in Morocco, but he moved to the Netherlands in 1976. So here he's, you know, saying that his fellow Muslims there aren't, this is not what they agree with, but if you have a problem with freedom, then pack your bags and hit the road. So take notes, Obama, ISIS, or whatever radicalized group that the U.S. and others have created to do their bidding uh, around the world, they're not the JV team. They are out here doing their own thing now, and it's time to stop being politically correct. It's time to start taking these hard stands like this, and it's definitely time to stop believing the propaganda that's being pumped out about these groups to not, not speak up because then, you know, that's Islamophobia or whatever. This is the time to speak up. Because let me show you what political correctness looks like. If you just go to the ISIS Twitter, ISIS floods their Twitter feed with their babies, right? It's just like any Facebook parent po floods their Facebook with their pictures of their kids. Well, here, Gawker is saying the ISIS babies are so freaking adorable. Oh, how cute. There, if you scroll down, you see some of them have their like little baby AKs and stuff, and they talk about how these kids are just so darn cute, the cutest darn jihadis you've ever seen. So basically it's just trendy to be ironic and talk about how cute these children are. And this is why we need to start calling it like it is, because when you have a White House that is actively droning countries and killing innocent people and standing back and looking away when countries like Israel are annihilating Gaza and killing thousands of innocent civilians and children and displacing them and killing their parents, these kids are going to grow up sympathizing with radical Islamic, radical extremist points of view. So they're basically doing this in our name. Obama says, I'm really good at droning people. You know, doing that in our name, it's time for us to stop allowing this to happen and start calling it like it is. A mother is basically calling out ISIS saying, Stop coming for our children. Leave our children alone. This is a suburban Chicago mother of 19-year-old American Mohammed Hamza Khan, who is facing terrorist charges for trying to join Islamic State militants. 
She, of course, condemned their violence and said that it's completely at odds with their Islamic faith, which is, of course, something that we're hearing a lot from the majority of Muslims. She accuses the group of brainwashing youths into joining their ranks via social media. Khan's mother says he's a very devout, committed, thoughtful kid who bought into some very slick advertising. And of course, we reported on this slick advertising a few months back with ISIS was uh, trying to appeal to the youth by saying, hey, do you like playing these violent video games? Well, come and join the jihad. You can shoot real guns and kill the real enemies. Or they'll tell young girls, oh, come, you know, you'll be loved by a really a devout man who will be totally loyal and faithful to you. And they get these young, impressionable children because not only are they coming after the youth because they're absolutely angry about what the handlers of this world have done with the place, but they're also very impressionable. Here is the latest ISIS jihadi recruitment video. Uh, there, sh It shows a young man um, killing two Russian spies. It's probably not real. There aren't, isn't any blood or anything, but that's not really what it's all about. It's a propaganda campaign. It shows an ISIS, so ISIS soldier dressed in camouflage, there's a young boy standing next to him holding a handgun. Um, basically, he tells the kid, Allah has gifted the Islamic State with these two spies. And the boy walks up behind the spies and appears to shoot them both in the back of the head. And then he raises the gun and he's cheering. And after these supposed executions, the young boy is asked, who will he be in the future? And he responds, I will be the one who slaughters you non-Muslim. And then he smiles and he says, I will be a Mujahid, God willing. So this is what's happening is they're basically teaching young children to come and join them. It's oh so cool. It's oh so trendy. ISIS babies are just so darn cute. Just look at them all there in the Twitter feeds. They're not taking down the Twitter feeds. They're not suspending these accounts. They're promoting these videos. They're allowing this to happen. So this is basically our job now is to start calling it like it is. And this is not cool. It's not trendy. And we do need to start speaking out about it. And yes, Obama did need to send someone to the Paris rally where they were protesting against this violence. Now, coming up, even more proof that Wi-Fi everywhere is really bad for your kids, and you will not believe what some idiot invented to help the surveillance state. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard, even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food in our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. 
It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your Pro Pure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1 888 253 3139. A new study suggests that Wi-Fi exposure might be more dangerous to kids than previously thought. Duh, you heard it here first, folks. We have been telling you this for years. Of course, now people are gonna start reporting on this. Uh, this study is basically pointing out that the World Health Organization or the International Agency for Research on Cancer lists RF EMF as a class 2B carcinogen uh, radio frequency Electromagnetic fields include radios, televisions, microwave ovens, cell phones, and Wi-Fi devices, which are, of course, ubiquitous. Now, this report is entitled, Why Children Absorb More Microwave Radiation Than Adults and the Consequences. And they found that children absorb a greater amount of microwave radiation than adults because their bodies are relatively smaller, their skulls are thinner, and their brain tissue is more absorbent. Fetuses are even more vulnerable than children, which means pregnant women should avoid exposing their fetus to microwave radiation. And it's not just cell phones, but think about all the time that you stand by your microwave while it's preparing your food or when you open the microwave to just check and make sure your dish is heated up properly and then you close it again. All of those microwave radiation, all those waves are right there at the microwave. It's not contained. You've got to stay a few feet back. Uh, but they also suggest that girls and women should not put their cell phones in their bras or their head scarves. And then they say that the cell phone manuals make it clear that overexposure is a problem. And of course, there are government warning labels, but not a lot of people are really aware of this, of course, because whenever these studies come out, they instantly try and downplay it because of course, if people knew how dangerous these things were, the exposure were, perhaps they wouldn't be buying all of these Wi-Fi toys for their children to just let their kids play with it. And that's one of the warnings they say is that these wireless devices are radio transmitters. They're not toys. And selling these toys that use Wi-Fi, it should be more monitored, closely monitored, or possibly even banned for use for children. And not to mention the fact we've, we've had people here before that are really outraged that they are turning entire classrooms and schools into Wi-Fi, constant Wi-Fi, hitting your children every day. So of course we need more studies on this and just people standing up and saying, you know what, I do not consent to being blasted with Wi-Fi. Now the studies that are cited in this paper found that RF EMF exposure is linked to cancers of the brain and of the salivary glands, ADHD, low sperm count, and among girls who keep cell phones in their bra, breast cancer. Now, the average time between exposure to a carcinogen and a resultant tumor is three or more decades. So basically what that means is we have absolutely no idea what the effects of all of this Wi-Fi and all of our smart homes and all of our smart cars and all of these devices that we just can't wait to get Wi-Fi around the entire city, around the entire world, we have no idea. Three generations or three decades from now, we'll find out just how trendy it is to have tumors all over our bodies. And of course, beauty companies are already taking note of the fact that technology is changing us. It is changing the way that we are evolving. One company did a study uh, for some skin tightening cream. They actually did an in-depth study uh, for skin tightening and dermatologists are blaming smartphones and tablets for causing sagging skin and wrinkles in younger generations. This includes a new condition they've dubbed tech neck. So this is a latest ailment that's resulting from modern technology. It's found mostly in people aged 18 to 39 who own an average of three devices. Tech neck refers to a specific crease just above the collarbone that's caused by repeated bending of the neck to look at the screen of a portable device. Because of this, Wrinkles and sagging in the jowls are starting to become a problem for the younger generation. So sagging jowls is something that doesn't happen to people until they're in their 50s or later. And now we're beginning to see this in young people. 
tech neck, brain tumors, and now back problems. Uh, back surgeon Kenneth Hansraj published a study in Surgery Technology International. He warned that chronic screen staring could deteriorate the back and neck muscles to the point of needing surgery. So it is literally like those drawings that you've seen, uh, basically showing the evolution of man. We are devolving back into cave dwellers. We've gotten all the way to upright man, and now we are back hunched over over our computers. If only we could send technology back to the caveman. Uh, but it's not just health issues. Technology is, of course, being blamed for overreach, the surveillance, constant violation of our rights. And a hacker who was once raided by the Secret Service is now making devices for the surveillance state. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com with a tech update on a new device that is out. Um, checked out an article early today by VentureBeat.com and it's promoting, or there's an article I should say, about this new device. This is a USB wall charger that secretly logs keystrokes um, from Microsoft and it says Microsoft only at this time wireless keyboards nearby. What it's able to do is pick up your keystrokes, get the URLs, um, pass, uh, passwords, and it's cleverly hidden as a you know, wall charger with a USB port. Also has an internal battery as well. So if it's not charged in, or if it's not plugged in and it's already charged up, you could put this device, uh, say, in a pocket or drop it in someone's bag if you wanted to be sneaky, and they would be able to pick up the keystrokes off that. But what it says uh, right now, it's only for Microsoft wireless keyboards, but like any technology, over time it'll blossom and grow and it'll eventually be for Apple, you know, so forth and so on. Now it says, this is no toy, the key sweeper includes a web-based tool for live keystroke monitoring. And now it can send SMS alerts for trigger words, usernames, or URLs in case you want to steal a PIN number or a password, and even continues to work after it's unplugged thanks to an internal battery, like I said before. This is what it looks like when he has it pulled up. He's able to pull up a Facebook message on someone says, haha, Matt, I'll be there. Um, so this thing has some pretty dangerous implications. You know, we, we've shown you time and time again that there are tons of household items right now that can be spying on you, dishwashers. Um, the CIA chief at the time, uh, General David Petraeus, said that uh, we'll spy on you through your dishwasher. So we have to worry about dishwashers. We have to worry about smart TVs. I have to worry about my personal phone because in here, when you go and read in the terms and services, it clearly says that the NSA is spying on you and they're not liable for any information that you may lose off your phone due to them snooping around on your devices. It seems like the world we're coming to live in is just a non, a never ending police state. Everything that we have, all of our tools are watching us, you know, and this is going to get every keystroke that you have as well. So this is something that, you know, I, I just can't stand seeing that, you know, one day if I ever have kids, they're going to have to grow up in this world that, you know, you have to worry about what you say because we, we keep seeing our, our freedom of speech attacked with the, uh, the interview movie, how they're making people scared to show the movie, um, the Charlie Hebdo attacks in France where they're trying to attack people for speaking. What's going to happen when we have all these devices and they crack down and there's martial law and they're listening to everything you say. Are you going to be fine based off what you say in your own home? Sanctimonious asshole. Melina Huxley, you are fined one half credit for a sort of boche violation of the verbal morality statute. Or will you be thrown in jail because you said something bad against the government? This is what it's all coming to and this is what we have to do. We need to become aware, we need to talk to our friends so we can protect ourselves against these tools. Um, here's a little background on the guy who invented this part. It's called, uh, his name's Sammy Kamkar, and he is the guy who uh, invented this keystroke logger. Um, it says, Sammy Kamkar, he's 30 years old, is a privacy and security researcher, computer hacker, whistleblower, and entrepreneur. At the age of 17, he co-founded Finality, which was a $46 million uh, company and private funding. He is best known for creating and releasing the fastest spreading virus ever. That was the MySpace worm Sammy. Um, after that, he was raided by the U.S. Secret Service, Electronic Crimes Task Force, um, through the Patriot Act. Um, he's also known for creating Skyjack. Skyjack is a drone or a spy drone, hacker drone, 
that he can send up once it goes up in the air. It can take control of those other drones. It brings him the controls back to his monitor, and then he's then able to make those drones do whatever commands he says and you know renders the people who have them useless to do anything with that. So this guy is a young guy, very smart, raided by the Secret Service. And now all of a sudden, he, in 2011, Camcard joined the board of directors for Brave New Software, a non-profit organization originally funded by a multi-million dollar U.S. State Department grant. So this guy is definitely into something right now. Who is he working for? Is he really trying to help expose weaknesses in electronics? Or has the government turned him and he is helping make these things to spy on Americans? I'll let you decide, but this is something interesting. Like I said, more and more of these devices are being made. This is another shackle to make you a prisoner in your own home. This is something we have to talk about. Continue to tell your friends, share the word, share these videos. Go to Infowars.com. Make sure you watch the nightly news at 7 p.m. Central and also watch the Alex Jones show from 11 to 2 p.m. Central uh, Monday through uh, Friday and then also the show on Sunday. Once again, I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. Yesterday, a DC Metro passenger train stopped abruptly and filled with smoke. One person died and others were injured. Some are still in the hospital. But the issue here is that the passengers remained inside of this passenger train for 30 minutes. They were told over the speakers to remain calm, stay inside of the vehicle, and they did that. One person died, so they obediently remained in a smoke-filled train for over 30 minutes. Is that what you do? You remain calm until the firefighters arrive? Hey, Rob Dew with Infowars.com, and I want to give put out this quick report on uh, the train fire or smoking that was happening last night in D.C. Here's some of the headlines on the Drudge Report. Uh, mystery smoke kills one, injures scores in D.C. Metro. People were throwing up around me. Terrified passengers stuck on train. There's a Washington Post article, One Dead After Smoke Fills Metro Train Station Forcing Evacuation. And it talks about these two Voice of America employees, which is interesting. That's a propaganda outfit of the uh, United States government. These two Voice of America employees got on the yellow train heading toward the Pentagon about 3 p.m. The six-car train had gone about 200 feet when it stopped. The train operator said, there's a problem, nobody move. <laughs> the men said the car quickly began to fill with smoke. Now that's where it gets just totally effed up. Why would you sit on a train for 30 or 40 minutes while it's filling up with smoke? When you're only, these guys said it was 200 feet from the platform, obviously not that very far. Other reports said that uh, train Metro employees actually got on the train and told everybody to, to get down low and not move. Why would you do that? If you have smoke coming in, you have to get away from, the, from what's causing the smoke, which is obviously where you're going because that's where the train stopped. It stopped as it got to the smoke. Well, the NTSB did an investigation. They're actually 800 feet from the platform. Still, how long does it take you to walk 800 feet? Do you really have to sit there and wait for the firefighters to come evacuate you? Well, for one lady, that was too late. She died. She died from the smoke inhalation, and that's what kills more people in a fire. It's not the heat from the flames. It's not the flames themselves. It's inhaling the smoke. So do you wait 30 or 40 minutes inside a burning house? To evacuate, do you wait for the firefighters to come and say, hey, it's okay to evacuate? No, but you're in DC. These people are probably used to being told what to do. They're probably government workers, most of them. So they're used to not lifting a finger unless somebody else tells them to do it, which is really sad that this had to happen this way. And you had a few people injured and some smoke inhalation, so who knows what's gonna happen. Now, after reading this, I'm like, could this have been some weird drill they were running to just see if they could keep people on the train? And then I started looking up about this and oh lo and behold here out of uh daily news nypd subway gas attack attest on monday and this was from uh, 2013 they were using a harmless odorous non-toxic gas that they used in the manhattan project and we're going to trace it going through the subway system to see how it reacted how it moved to test for a biological attack but that's not the first time it, uh, it was ever tested here's another one from the new york times Test gas attack is coming to Subway this time with fair notice. So it talks about the test that I was just talking about, but then you go down to the bottom of the page. A team of Army researchers from a unit that specialized in biological and chemical warfare came to New York in June 1966 and secretly dropped light bulbs loaded with what they regarded as harmless bacteria 
onto the tracks of stations along the Avenue of the Americas. Another technique was to drop light bulbs on the sidewalk ventilation grates and let the cloud of bacteria drift down below in a kind of mist. People waiting for the trains got doused with the stuff. And there's a quote um, from a book when uh, the Clouds and Gelf people, they brushed their clothing, looked up at the grating, and walked on. Other scientists brought meters and satchels and handbags to measure how quickly the stuff spread, concerned they might have to explain what they were doing. They brought fake letters of identification. No, uh, nosy bystanders were given icy glares and backed off. Although the bacteria was generally believed to be harmless, there were reports that people were sickened by them. But it was years before anybody had realized that the Army had carried out this and other experiments, and they were done by a special unit at Fort Detrick, Maryland. People who came up with, um, it was the anthrax, the militarized anthrax, that's where they, they said it came th from, uh, and, and working with the Central Intelligence Agency. And it didn't come to light until 1975 when they had those congressional hearings on the CIA with the heart attack gun and other such things. So will, was this a test? Probably not. It was probably some malfunction. But what I don't get is why the passengers stayed on the trains for 40 minutes before firefighters came to get them out. Obviously, other Metro employees got on the train, so it was safe to get off the train and walk because Metro employees were doing it. Oh, if you need a flashlight, how many people have cell phone flashlights? Just about everybody there has a cell phone, so they're able to illuminate their way out. You, you mean to tell me that you can't walk 800 feet while there's smoke pouring into your train? That's just so odd that people stayed on that train. So maybe it was the government just testing to see whether people, how they would react in these situations. Would they listen to the voice of authority, the guy that got on the loudspeaker and told everybody to be calm? It also reminds me of, of a time when Aaron Dykes and I were coming back uh, from the airport from a trip and we're walking along and all of a sudden the TSA guy yells, freeze. He just tells everybody to freeze where they're at walking around inside the airport. People, we were already past the security area, but they wanted us to freeze because they had some situation going on or what they claimed was a situation. So it's just another example of should we even listen to these authorities, these people who have proven themselves to be incompetent over and over again. Next time you're on a train and it starts filling in with smoke, I think you ought to think twice about listening to the voices of authority who tell you to stay on the train and not get out and get to safety. This has been Rob Dew with InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. If you like these reports and others, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Your subscription can be shared with up to 20 people, and our, right now the cost is less than $30 per year. And so with 30 people, it ends up about 12 cents a day per person. Amazing deal. You get all the videos that we have, all the movies, uh, the live TV shows, the live specials we do, and the nightly news. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using super oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Yes. Took it that first day, then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014, the most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra-clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12, Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. My guest today is part of a new activist group 
chemchasers.com. Their focus is bringing the truth of geoengineering to the mainstream. They're gonna do this by compiling a lot of video evidence of actual spraying going on, as well as they're asking users to submit their own independent lab tests. And this next clip is something else that the group is really trying to do, compile a lot of weather reports from local media to show just how they're reporting about geoengineering without actually telling you what's going on. Sometimes, occasionally, the, mil the military will uh, put some substances into the atmosphere that are detected by our radar, our weather surveillance radar. This is actually not rain. This is called chaff. This is something that the military actually let out of their aircraft a couple of hours ago. It's, uh, it can be plastic, it can be aluminum, and basically it's something that they emit from the aircraft in order to confuse radar. Dominic with Chem Chasers, thank you for joining us today. Now, why was it important for you to put this compilation video together and kind of get the ball rolling uh, to talk about geoengineering? Uh, I thought it was really important for the American people to see that even the news is reporting on chemtrails. Um, they're sometimes using the code name CHAF or CONTRAILS, but they are reporting on it. Exactly. We've actually played video. Uh, our weather reporter years ago was talking about chaff, and he was explaining very calmly about how it's just these metals being released into the sky, and basically it's to block the radar. Someone there mentions that it's to block these planes from the radar. Why would that be something that's important to do? Doesn't that mean other planes might be blocked from the radar as well? <laughs> but also, looking at those fibers, the chaff, I don't want that floating around in the sky. Yeah, you know, that stuff, uh, they haven't done much research on real military chaff. Um, and they say it's non-toxic, but, you know, they have they show clouds on these radars covering most of this Florida state and trails that move state to state. And that would mean that this chaff is traveling in large amounts over the U.S. Absolutely. And you mentioned when we, we talked earlier that one of the things that was really bothering you about this is that on the days that they're reporting, the children and elderly should stay inside. Uh, days, you know, where the, the air quality is really poor, these are the heavy spray days. It's kind of what prompted you to get out there and start recording these events. Yeah, um, on the local level, when I check the air quality, um, I live in a valley where some of the pollution somewhat settles. And more often than not, it's at a level five. And that means everybody should be inside. Uh, the schools are not alerted about this. Nobody seems to know when I talk to people on the street that the air is this bad. And the problem with this is, is that when I see them covering the whole valley with grids and trails, it's literally trapping the pollution in like a greenhouse. And uh, it's making it even worse. Exactly. And the chaff, uh, those type of things, it looks a lot different than what we've seen with the chemwebs. We interviewed Marie Snow a few weeks ago, and she had given us video of these chemwebs actually looked like spider web uh, fibers, and these things were collecting all over the fence posts there um, in her city, in her town, but you actually saw this falling on your daughter's school. Uh, and that's something that should be concerning to parents everywhere. These are falling on your children's school. They're, they're falling all over the playground, in your backyard. They're everywhere. And here we have news reporters that fail to investigate and find out what this really is. Yeah, you know, a um, couple months ago, we had uh, the exact same thing happen to us that happened to Marie Snow. We were outside filming a couple very low chem trails that looked really thick, and we set up a tripod, and within an hour after the chem trails were laid, they had expanded, moved in front of the sun, and the sky filled with these string-like fibers. And we, we knew it was coming from the chem trail. And so, Dominic, all of this gaslighting and this disinformation, especially when you could see it with your own eyes, it's affecting your daughter's school all of this stuff is what really prompted you to start the Chem Chasers web series. Talk to me a little bit about that, and what do you hope to do with this show? Yeah, when um, the webs came falling on my daughter's school, that was the last straw, and we had already been filming Chem tra Trails for a few months, and we had a lot of footage, so we decided to get going with this show. And uh, we get a lot of support. We get people from around the whole world sending us pictures and videos with the exact same patterns, the exact same sun blocking, 
the same grids, all of it. And uh, we hope that this show is going to be able to reach the American people. Um, I feel like a lot of the geoengineering movements just haven't gotten to the general public yet. And we think with this reality show, it might be a way to get to the average Joe. Exactly. And I know that you have a place on your website where people can submit their lab tests. Um, Marie Snow and um, her friend, I apologize at the moment, I can't think of her name, but they have the geoengineering uh, fallout evidence Facebook page. And I know she also has the the lab uh, the information there where you can send your your samples to the lab. It was about forty dollars, she said. Um, but basically, people are trying to now compile this evidence. So just along with your show and independent lab tests, people can find out what is there. So is that what that that button is there for people to submit their lab tests? And have you done any independent testing on your own? Um, the lab test section on our website is going to be available soon. We are still in the process of getting our results back. And Marie Snow's Geoengineering Fallout Evidence Group would be the best place to go if you have your own samples. Uh, she'll give you information on that lab and where to send them. We want to demand evidence. We want to know, is this safe? We want proof that it's completely safe. There, the news reporter just so casually says, oh, well, we're just doing testing and putting some metals into the air. And is it safe? Is it safe for us to breathe? And we've seen so many times in the past where, you know, we can't really trust the EPA and these other government uh, agencies to give us the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So we've got to do our own independent uh, testing. Well, what else can people do to kind of get the, get the truth out there and demand some answers? What else do you guys, you know, hope that people can bring to you? A lot of people don't even know what chemtrails look like. Um, just because you do not see a chemtrail in your sky doesn't mean they haven't sprayed in another city close by and that trail is blown over into your city and expanded and looks like a cloud by the time you see it. So be suspicious of everything in the sky. If it looks like aerosol or filaments falling out of it or strange looking, take some pictures, take a video and send it to tips at chemchasers.com. And we'll take a look at it and put it with the rest of our database. And Yeah, I think people are going to be really surprised to see just how many different kinds of, of chemtrails, geoengineering, solar radiation management. It seems like there are a lot of different types of spraying uh, that's actually going on. And I think once we can compile some evidence from around uh, the nation, possibly even the world, where else this is going on. They had a hearing in Shasta, California, about chemtrails with a ton of residents that got together and went to the board with all the evidence and had a hearing to ban chemtrails. And nobody talks about this anywhere. You could find it on the trial on YouTube, though. Right. So talk to me about this ridiculously resilient ridge. Hovering over California and the Pacific Ocean, is something called the Ridiculously Resilient Ridge. And it's an area of high pressure that sits on top of California, and every storm that comes to it breaks apart and is diverted around this ridge. Now, the thing that was strange to me when doing my research, I found a news clip from Ireland showing chemtrails with the news reporter talking about them, and she also explained that there was a very vast zone of high pressure over the same area with the chemtrails. Now, we've seen heavy spraying in California along the coastline. We call it the chem barrier. And as these storms roll in, they literally break up on the chem barrier, and we never see any of the rain. So these chemtrails can be used for weather modification, droughting, all of the above. Right, exactly. We actually uh, did a whole report on that. I did a whole segment, Time Magazine and a lot of other um, influential media out there were kind of coming out and saying this solar management could have devastating effects on millions of people around the world because they don't actually understand the implications of messing with the weather, controlling the weather. It could cause huge droughts in some places, famine, uh, torrential rain in some areas, and just mess with the weather systems there. Obviously, we've seen a lot of typhoons and tsunamis and just really bizarre weather patterns. Uh, but of course, you know, you do have other places where there are droughts going on. So it's already kind of out there that there's 
they know it's an issue, they know it might cause problems, but they don't want to admit that it's actually already taking place. So that's what you guys are here to, to just gather evidence that yes, in fact, it is going on. Yeah, and um, we got a new episode that's going to be coming out very soon called The Grid, where we show undeniable proof of a six-line grid being made in seven minutes. And these grids can be made so fast, people don't even see that it happened, and they can expand and turn into a full cloud cover and float to the next city within 30 minutes, where the unsuspecting civilians think it's a real cloud. Wow. Yeah. And I've seen those days here in Austin myself where I've, I've walked outside and you just see the grids, the hash marks all over the sky. And it's almost instantaneous that my eyes start uh, watering and I get my throat tightens up. And it's, it's almost like I'm having an allergy attack, but I don't really have allergies. And it always coincides with really heavy spray days. I just don't understand how people just can't look up, can't see that Clouds do not make perfectly <laughs> squared grids in the sky. It's not normal. Those are not from airplanes because, as we know, contrails dissipate. They go away. Yeah, you'll have a little bit of a jet stream, but it goes away. It doesn't just float in the sky for the entire day. Um, one more thing I'd like to add before I go is that it's not only a cloud program. It's also a haze program. And these aerosol sprays that they spray up there, they may look like clouds, but if you'll notice over the day, they will dissipate and fall down in a haze. And if you live in a valley like I do, you can look all around the horizon and you can see this haze filling the valley. And it's truly disgusting. Well, Dominic, thank you so much. And again, everyone send their tips to, what is it, tips at chemchasers.com? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thanks. And that's it for the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, become a subscriber to the Alex Jones channel, and then head over to prisonplanet.tv. We are still running our membership special, only $29.95 a year. You can share your username and password with up to 20 other friends at the same time. And of course, your membership helps us here to run this entire operation. So thanks for tuning in the show tonight, and we will see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.